I think the the time in bed restriction is pretty interesting. Yes. And, and, and in talking with sleep physicians mm -hmm. who also implement this, mm -hmm. it seems quite draconian at the outset. How do you navigate that and how do you decide how hard to squeeze the, yeah. the tube of toothpaste? Let me draw a line in the sand between what CBTI says broadly as a treatment and then how I've actually implemented it in my clinic. Mm -hmm. They will have you fill out something called a sleep diary. You can use that to calculate how much time a person was sleeping on average over the course of the week. And what CBTI does is it says, you patient, why don't you pick what time you wanna get up every day? And then you, you would ostensibly pick a time. Let's say your, your sleep log said you were naturally sleeping six hours a night, right? The clinician would add 30 minutes to that and then work backwards from your chosen wake time. So this whole part in CBTI where people choose their wake time, that's not a thing for me. In my clinic, we play a game called democracy within a dictatorship. Because if I let that patient just to choose 8.30 a.m. as their wake time, and they were only producing six and a half hours of sleep. They're going to bed at one in the morning. They're going to bed at two in the morning, and they're getting up at 8.30. So do you add the hour of nap time back to sleep and say, actually, you're getting six hours of sleep. Let's do the exercise based on five plus one plus no, a half, 6.5. No, 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 no. We want to extinguish that sleeping during the day thing. So there's a difference between a person without insomnia healthily using naps and, there's a and then there's a person with insomnia who's napping to compensate for what's not happening at night. 